Hey guys, welcome to the Criminal Lineup. We are an independent YouTube channel that chronicles interesting history, mystery, and crime stories. If you would like the video and subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's get started with the video. Sein Sowjet zeigen, soll er vor sich hertragen und wir werden in unserem Zeichen wieder siegen! Along with the millions of lives taken in World War II was an incalculable loss of artistic and cultural treasures that were stolen by the Nazi party in their plans for world domination. As the war drew to a close, Captain Robert Posey and Private First Class Lincoln Christen barely slid through a small gap of rubble, blocking the entrance of the Altaze salt mine, which is situated high in the Austrian Alps. Their special unit, famously dubbed the Monuments Men, was tasked with locating and preserving cultural pieces of history, including ancient architecture, art, books, and religious relics that had been looted or damaged during World War II. After the war had ended, the Allies had been given vital information that a portion of Nazi leader Adolf Hitler's personal art collection was being hidden in a salt mine in Austria. As Posey and Kristen entered the Altaze mine, they walked past one chamber and illuminated the second with the flames from their lamps. There, propped up a foot off the ground on empty cardboard boxes, was the breathtaking adoration of the mystic lamp, also known as the Ghent Altarpiece. This complex religious painting was created by Dutch artists Hubert and Jan van Eyck and unveiled on the 6th of May, 1432. It is hailed as one of the most important examples of European art in the 15th century. The 12 panel masterpiece stands 11 feet tall and 15 feet wide. As Nazi forces advanced into Belgium, Belgian leaders sent the painting to France to be hidden, but in 1942, Hitler personally demanded the Ghent altarpiece be seized from a museum in France and brought to New Schweinstein Castle in Bavaria, where a cache of stolen relics were being hidden. Adolf Hitler apparently wanted to protect and preserve the painting from the destruction and chaos of the war, which ironically he had started. After the Allies had led bombing raids near New Schweinstein Castle, Hitler ordered the painting be hidden deep in the Altaze mine, where it would sit until Posey and Christian located the masterpiece. After the war had come to an end, it was returned to its original home at St. Bravo's Cathedral in Ghent, Belgium. To deter thieves from stealing the piece once again, the Belgian government had encased the masterpiece in bulletproof tempered glass that put them back more than 30 million euros. Along with the Van Eyck brothers paintings, the Monuments men would find more than 4,500 artifacts stored in that particular salt mine. Among the collection were priceless pieces of art, such as the Astronomer by Dutch master Johannes Vermeer, which still has a stamp of a swastika on the rear frame of the painting. This was not the only Vermeer found in the Altaze mine. The art of painting, which is an example of the Dutch Golden Age, was also found hidden in the salt mine by the Nazis. These paintings, along with pieces of art found in the mine by Rembrandt and Michelangelo, were to be focal points in Hitler's Führer Museum. Adolf Hitler's fascination of art started when he was just a boy. In his youth, he had dreamed of becoming a professional artist. His dream would be halted when he failed his entrance exams and was denied admission to the Vienna Academy of Fine Art. Although he failed as an artist, Hitler would continue to enjoy art, particularly classic portraits and landscapes by the old masters, especially those of German origin. Hitler loathed modern art and described it as degenerate. He thought it to be a product of decadent 20th century society. In 1933, Adolf Hitler would be voted in as Chancellor of Germany. 
he soon began to plunder valuable items from Jews. Priceless items of great significance were also stolen, including paintings, sculptures, ceramics, books, and religious treasures. In that same year, Hitler would order all modern works of art in German museums be removed from public viewing. Nazi propagandist Joseph Goebbels stated in a radio broadcast that modern German degenerate artists were garbage and not worthy of being publicly showcased in Nazi Germany. After the Nazis calculated smear campaign, Hitler appointed Hildebrand Gerlitt to try and liquidate the more than 16,000 pieces of so-called degenerate art. Gerlitt held art shows all over Germany, but had little success selling the items as they were labeled garbage by their leader. So on March 20th, 1939, in a public demonstration of disdain, the Nazis set fire to more than 1,000 paintings and sculptures, as well as 4,000 watercolor drawings and prints in the courtyard of the Berlin Fire Department. This was not a new practice, for they had previously publicly burned thousands of pieces of literature they had not approved of. While the Nazis were in power, they managed to systematically plunder property from every territory they occupied. Hitler planned to transform the city of Linz, which was close to his birthplace in Austria, into Nazi Germany's cultural center for arts. There he had dreamed to open up his enormous Führer Museum, which would house his huge stolen collection of some of the most sought after works of art in the world. His goal was to overtake Vienna as Europe's premier center for fine art. Although his plans never came to fruition, the Nazis managed to get their hands on thousands upon thousands of priceless pieces throughout occupied Europe. To combat the theft, the Allies created units of experts in art and literature to retrieve as many relics of history as possible. The most notable units created by the Allied forces to protect such pieces in war-torn areas during and after World War II was the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archives program also known as the Monuments Men. These brave men and women, who were comprised of 350 army personnel from 14 nations, would operate in small groups, sometimes in active war zones, even though most had little to no training in warfare. They were tasked with locating lost cultural pieces of history from the war and if damaged, assess the item and restore it to original form. They had their work cut out for them, because during the war, the Nazis had plundered approximately 20% of all art in Europe. Although the Monuments Men would locate more than 5 million pieces of art, there are well over 1,000 still missing. <laughs>